And we're back with some more RimWorld, and today we're going to be doing a new series, and we're going to be doing something a little different. Let me, let me try and show you the plan I've got. You see, we're going to start on the tribal start, but what we're going to do is we're going to pick five different species. We're going to go with uh, Neanderthal, uh, Pigskin, one of these Impid types, uh, Wasters, and y Yatkins, whatever, the, the, the furry, you know, Chewbacca looking ones. So all five of these have uh, germline genes, as in their genes that carry over into their children. And then what we, the plan, now I, I'm saying this as a plan because I don't know how viable this will be. What I want to do is get each one of these and get each one of them to have three children with three different people. And those three different people must all be from other genes. So for example, we could uh, breed a Neanderthal with a pigskin, an impid, and a waster and see what kind of children we get out of it. And the pigskin we breed with three other ones as well, impid, waster, yatkin, but they all have to, they're not allowed to actually have children with baseline humans. They all have to be ones that have uh, germline genotypes that are inheritable. And then, once all of them have three, ki uh, have three kids apiece, that means there'll be 20 people on the map, we're going to take 15 of them and launch them into space and we're going to keep five of them, one of each kid. So we're going to keep one of each kid and then we're going to activate the Archonexus quest. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, the Archonexus quest is a three-parter and when you accept it, what it does is it allows you to pick up to five of your current pawns and carry them through into sort of a, another playthrough. Now you will have to do another bunch of stuff like collect uh, items, things like that, and you get to start on a brand new tile with the five pawns you chose with a, a few pieces of resources and things you brought with you. So our plan would be to take these five pawns, which are of course going to be the best of all of the children, and then we would do the same thing again where we would breed each one of them and see what kind of germline genes we get bred into the lot of them. Then, same again, we would take the five best children and we would keep them. We would send the other 15 off on another quest, say we'd uh, send them off on the shuttle for the, the Stellark or something like that. That would leave us with five pawns, all of whom were selectively bred from, well, a, a lot of, like, two, three generations, and that would get us all the way to the end of the Archonexus questline. And then once we have it down to the five pawns, we would then, well, we'd get them all to have a whole bunch of kids amongst each other to see what kind of super pawns we could get. Well, preferably, hopefully. Maybe it won't work, maybe it'll be just a, a whole mess. That's the thing, it's sort of like a, a, a rough plan outline of seeing where we're going. At the same time, we're also going to do gene splicing on them to splice other exogenes onto them, so they won't just be like that they'll have uh, germline genes, they'll also have exogenes, exogenogenes, whatever. We're going to cram those on top. Maybe some families will turn vampire. Like, these are. this is going to be basically one family down this side, like they're all going to be five separate families. We'll colour code them or something. So some of them might end up as vampires, we'll probably turn them all into casters and stuff as well. Some of them might end up as, uh, oh, mechano me mechanoiders, whatever. We'll see what we end up with, and then we'll breed the best of them at the very end to make super soldiers. And then we can finish out the Archonex quest line, or maybe do something else. I don't know. We'll have to see. But that is the, the baseline plan. We're going to breed a bunch of them together to see what we end up with. And this way we get to restart a few times and see how fast it goes. So I was thinking, for the first playthrough, or the first round, we just go with normal max difficulty. For the second round, we'd go with 500% max 500% difficulty. And for the final round we would go with 500% threat multiplier and we'd remove the threat limiter as well and see how well five pawns can stack up. This is going to give us lots of problems though. For example, well, we're only going to have five pawns until they have a bunch of kids. Where are we going to get their partners? That's going to be a little bit, um, we're going to have to cross that crime when we come to it. We're probably going to have to have slaves as well just to fill in blanks in our uh, production capacity because it's going to be years before the kids come online. Oh, and yet we can't crossbreed them anywhere along the line because at the very end down here, we want them to have kids amongst themselves. So we can't use the same partners in any of the different family lines. So each family line is going to have to be separate from the other. That's going to make things a little bit more fun as well. So it's sort of like a... A cross between selective breeding, a popularity contest, and a super soldier competition. Yeah, so, something along those lines, you know, just, but family orientated, of course, family orientated. So anyway, the settings for this will be Lost Tribe, of course, we're going to be going Randy Randy, losing his fun, reload any time. We're not going to make it a custom or anything like that, we're just going to leave it on the default stuff for the first one. Uh, we're going to do Ice because, yeah, well, of our last playthrough, as well as that, I've been looking through here, and you can see these cannibal pirate gangs. They have Neanderthals, pigskin wasters. They have a bunch of xenotypes we'd like to capture and use for... Well, we need kids of that type, or people of that type, to to breed with our people. So, yeah. Oh, and the Rough Outlander Union also have a few. I'd like to get my hands on maybe some of those Neanderthals and dirt moles. So, yeah. Um, 
No, oh, and we want to increase the population massively. We want way more of these. We're going to be playing on this map. We'll have to do one, two. Yeah, we'll have to do three settlements on this map. So at least two, is it? Oh, whatever. We'll figure it out. Uh, let me have a quick look here. Oh, yeah. For our first settlement, I'm thinking something easy and simple. We want to be able to fly through the early first settlement and just, you know, get things started underway. But I was thinking for that, we do temperate forest because it's the easiest type. And then for a different biome for the second type, maybe... I don't know, we might do tundra or desert or, you know, arid shrubland or something. And then we'll do an even harder biome for the the next the restart after that. But I found what I think is a perfect location right here. Uh, it's got marble on it, which we always like. It's on a road and we have three trade partners nearby who are already willing to trade with us. And we've got two more that can be convinced. And we've even got the empire close by. Sure, there's loads of pirates, but that doesn't make a difference. I think, yes, this looks absolutely perfect. Oh, uh, map size. A little bit bigger. Yeah, I'd like it. Mm, 250, 300 cells. Yeah, give me 300. I like my maps just a little bit larger. Oh, uh, ideology. Yeah, we're, we're playing with all, all of the DLCs. Uh, we'll go with some sort of ideology. Ideolo ah, ideological is fine. We're all uh, supremacist is just the, the baseline one. You always want it for the shooting specialist. I, I can't help myself. Uh, let me see. Please welcome to our religion, which is called whatever we want. Um, Yes. Nothing really changed crazy here. I put in fast research just so we wouldn't spend too long on the lower levels. Uh, I have changed it so pants, people need to wear pants. Otherwise, you know, people get unhappy. I left corpses ugly, can't harvest organs, can't eat people. Uh, executions don't care. It's acceptable if the prisoners are guilty. Uh, actually, respected if guilty will be fine. Diversity of thought neutral. Basically, nothing else has really changed down here. Uh, desired skill spikes is about the only weird thing. Then we've got leader, moral guide, melee specialist, uh, trigger happy. Then we stuck in a bunch of festivals, but it was basically some of them make the locals like us, some of them show us a, a thing nearby, a, an ancient ruins nearby, and some of them recharge our side focus. That's about it. And then for idols, we went with minigun, uh, persona Zeus hammer, and a charge rifle. Since we're going to be going around multiple times, we might be able to grab multiple relics and bring them with us. So it means we could be bringing in like six advanced legendary relics into the, the last mission. That would be kind of fun. Would also drive up our wealth incredibly high, but... That's fine. Now we just have to go through here and change all of these to the different types. Now, um, one thing. The only options here to actually use... What is... One in custom? Text at all? What are these? Oh, never mind. They were just me playing around. I can get rid of those. You can make your own custom ones. That's actually good to know. Anyway. Uh, the reason I went with Neanderthal, Pigskin, Impid, Waster, and Yatkin is the only other one was Dirt Mole. And I just didn't want to be one of those filthy mole people. Look at that, even with the fast wound healing and the, the the strong melee, the thing that annoyed me was they're nearsighted, which means they're useless at range. I mean, uh, I, I, I would prefer the actual Neanderthal who always comes with slow learning. But okay, let me just spin through a few, pick them up. This will be our team. For our Neanderthal lunk here, they will be doing mostly plants, namely because they're a slow learner. They're, they're, they're not, their skills are not going to get much better than they are right now. And because they're a slow bloke, slow learner, we're just going to stick them on plants, maybe some hauling, the odd bit of construction, but yeah, we're not expecting much out of poor Lunk here. Uh, then we've got Smokey, they're a pigskin. They uh, they can digest stuff really good, but we're going to have to cook food for everyone else. This does not really help us in the slightest. In fact, if we could uh, breed those out of the genetic makeup, that would be wonderful. Uh, but we've put them into social and intellectual, namely because they have trotter hands, which reduces their manipulation, meaning putting them into crafting, artistic, medical, plant, like all that stuff is going to slow them down, so... Uh, social intellectual was probably all I was going to go with was for them. Maybe we can get bionic arms to replace those trotter arms at some point. Eh, we'll have to see. Anyway, then we've got a uh, daemon here. They're an impid. They can spit fire, but have weak immunity and slow wound healing, which not great, not great. Uh, but they're a fast learner. They've got bloodlust. Uh, they always have pessimist, but they are a jogger, which means they, they move at a movement speed of five. Made a medical, intellectual, a little bit of mining, incapable of dumb labor. labor. They should be spending most of their time, uh, Sciencing. If they're not sciencing, they're medicaling, and if they're not doing that, they're doing the little bit of mining we're going to need here and there. They should work out. We'll, we'll see. We're kind of spreading around some of the skills just in case someone dies. We're not perfectly safe, no matter what we do. But anyway, we've got Stalker here. They are a waster. They're a... Uh, waste, wasted? Waster. Yeah, yeah, they're super immunity. They're, uh, they're immune to toxins, pretty much. Uh, they have a psychic dependency, and they're a wake-up addict immune. So we'll probably be using them for mining, a little bit of construction, and maybe crafting as well on the sides. Incapable of social, unfortunately, but we're going to have to, well, keep Psychite on them. We're going to have to start planting Psychite tea pretty much immediately, otherwise they will probably die. 
Uh, they need to consume Psychite once every five days. If they stop consuming it once every five days, after 30 days, they will fall into a coma. That's, um, bad. Anyway, then we've got Chewbacca here. They are, are y y Yatkins, whatever. They're the furry. They're robust, which is kind of nice. Slow wound healing, unfortunately. Strong melee damage. But we've got them in animals, which is their specialty. We've also got them in cooking. A uh, bit of careful shooting because, well, yeah, we were stuck with a few. But they're sanguine, which was kind of nice. Psychically dull. But all in all, they'll be spending most of their time doing medical or, or uh, animals and cooking. We'll maybe get them into a few other side projects along the way. But this, this I think looks like a good start to our family. Uh, let's see how this works out. I have stripped out all the mods. We are just back to core, ideology, royalty, and biotech. We'll slowly add in mods along the way just for quality of life stuff, but... Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. The gods were very angry. The blood machines came at night. They swept through your village, cutting and burning your people with their blades and devil fire. Only a few of you escaped. Now, after a harrowing journey with no friends to turn to, you must build a new home in the wilderness like your ancestors did. Right then. Oh. People seem to miss this one, but you can just right-click allow and unforbid all items on the map. And done. And even if there's stuff like simple meals or something out here, I don't think there is on this start, but anything on the map just immediately gets unbanned. Now, we're going to have to pick out who gets weapons, who gets bows. We have very weak... Why does we have a shotgun? Someone brought a pump shotgun with them. Nice. That's going to make hunting interesting. We've got everyone armored up, or armed up, and... Oh, where is your... One second. They have a new option now. Weapons below portrait. Always. There we go. Much better. Ah. <sighs> I think first things first, we take all of the resources that over here and we move them down to this section. I say we build around the anima tree. I mean, it's a tribal start. Building around an anima tree just seems like the fun thing to do. Uh, you immediately prioritize holding that herbal medicine. As well as that, we're going to have to set up some drug policies. We have one person who's got a psychite addiction. I believe it's Stoker. Yeah, they've got a psychite dependency. So we need to make sure they get the psychite tea. They hold on to it and we're going to have to schedule it so they only take a little bit every so often. We need to hold it until we get a crop of that in. Otherwise, that could become very problematic very quickly. We've got just about everyone in on the hauling. Uh, we'll bring it all down here and we're going to make ourselves a little setup. I think psi, psi abilities are the way to go if we want to start out. We're only going to have five people, so getting a few of them reasonable, get up a research bench, plow into research, plow into psi abilities, that should allow us to survive all the early waves of things. And then once we've got enough research out of the way with, we can start going a bit crazy. For example, we need to get exogenetics down here. We're also going to need gene processing and we're going to need, well, archogenetics at some point. That requires a whole bunch of other stuff up here. Where's the other ones we're looking for? Ah, yes, fertility procedures. We're going to need that before we can have any kids at all. So, yeah, yeah, this is this is going to be a lot of research. Oh, man, so much research. I have went ahead and installed a Camera Plus mod. That way we can zoom in and out more, but more importantly, I can bookmark locations, which makes cutting between uh, different sections of the base much easier and much cleaner. Uh, Lunk and Stalker here are going to finish the last of the buildings. Uh, I'll put a, probably a wooden door over this side as well, once they've actually walled this in. And everyone else is currently bringing back the pemmican and the wood. We need to have everything back at this location as soon as possible and get ourselves some beds. One thing to make absolutely sure over is that you don't accidentally roof over the uh, the anima tree. Otherwise, it'll give off an anima screen. That would, would be pretty bad. Oh, uh, we've got Damon over here. They are going to go do some mining. Reason being, well, they kind of can't do anything else. They can't do dumb labor, so they can't haul for us. And the only other specialities are medical and intellectual. So, yeah, they can go do the mining until we get them a research bench, at which point we should be good to go. Uh... That soundstone's table can stay there. Oh, and another thing we can do. We can turn off toggle automatically expanding the home area. I always forget that one. Yep. Otherwise, every time you build something, it increases your home area and you end up sweeping the ground for no apparent reason. Eh, uh, it's just, it's, it's one of those things. Well, put down a few tables or a few ch stools so that everyone has something to sit on. Well, throw down a wooden hoopstone ring. And then on top of that, what else do we need? Well, chuck down a quick research bench right there just so we have something for, uh, Smoky, not, not Smoky, Damon to be doing. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to be spending all their time mining. Uh, people are getting in their recreation as well, and we have no way of making them beds, I've just realized. God, it's been a while since I played. I've, I forgot that we can't make bed rolls. We need to have butchered up some animals, and I didn't kill any just yet. Uh, Smoky, you've brought back some of the pemmican. Guys, stop leaving the pemmican over there. Uh, Muppets. For our first research, I'm thinking complex furniture. Would be nice to get some regular beds installed. Yeah, we'll go for it. Uh, complex furniture unlocks things which you cannot build because they require memes. Yeah, that's fine. 
God, there's so many mods now on top of each other, or so many DLCs, there's just too many things to keep track of. Alright, I think once we get the last of the pen we can hold back. Yeah, we can go around and start hunting tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be all about hunting some animals, getting ourselves a whole bunch of furs. Yeah, so let's see what kind of animal stockpile we've got. Well, so far, no one's died. Everyone's sleeping on the ground, which is not going to help moods and expectations. But we've got extremely low expectations for now to keep us going and the initial optimism. But we are going to need to improve the bedroom situation. I might even do a little bit of sculpturing. Hmm. That means we're going to need to be able to smash up some rocks. Also, I'm very tempted by this wall over here. However, our people's combat skills are absolutely horrendous. Uh, also, our cat had an unfortunate accident. Um... Yes, thankfully it was the only animal we have that wasn't bonded. The other two are bonded and also their dogs. Well, one's an arctic fox and the other is a Labrador. So yeah, it turns out they were perfectly safe. First thing in the morning though, we're going to need to get ourselves a fueled stove, a wooden butcher's table and sort of a little kitcheny area in here. Uh, I might actually even put in a few pieces of floor tile, say there, there and there, just to help make this place look a little bit cleaner. And a little bit of cleanliness will help out. Then we need to go, once that's all finished though, there is a whole host of deer over here and I want to go and get my hands on them. If we can get ourselves a bunch of deer that should provide us all the simple we meals we need for a while and I need to be more careful about who's doing the building. Yeah I don't think sh a stalker should be doing it they're botching way 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 too many things. Why are you botching? Oh gunshot. No it uh, oh, is affecting your manipulation. You know what we will stop you before you finish anything and let someone else do the last uh, last bit on things. That might be the safer plan. Yeah there you go. Much better. Uh, we should hopefully be able to kill these fairly quick. And they're immediately scattering. That is a problem. You know what, let's get behind them and force them towards our base. That might be a smarter plan. Uh, and get in nice and close so that we can do the maximum amount of damage. One down. We only need three. The reason we only need three, what's the maximum amount we can carry back? Uh, that's two. And there's a third one over there. Perfect. With all the deer brought back, well, at least two of them, that means we can get ourselves some meat on and... Yep, I made a mistake there, didn't I? I want to need to set that to drop on the floor. And you, I can set to drop on the floor as well. In fact, you know what? I'm put using the wrong build. We shall make this cook four simple meals, do forever, and yet yeah, drop on the floor. And the great thing is Chewbacca here, they are... What is it? They've got a cooking skill of 11 and they don't seem to have any negatives. You, go, uh, go do some cooking if you wouldn't mind. Training? No! Uh, prioritize cooking at fueled stove if you wouldn't mind. I need you to make a few meals. Everyone's going through the last of the pemmican, and I'd like to save at least a tiny fraction of that if we possibly could. Four simple meals would go a long way towards making that happen. Our first event from Randy is a psychic soothed female. I'll take it. Thank you kindly. Um, we now have 51 more plain leather. We can stick down a second sleeping spot. I'm going to slowly rotate out everyone's sleeping spot and replace them with uh, bedrolls. For now, Chewbacca's going to get it because they're going to be doing most of our cooking and we sort of need the meals. We'll just get by on wild food for a while, or, or killing animals, taking the meat and using them. We don't have to worry about a toxic fallout or for the first 60 days and a cold snap for the first 30, so we can survive without planting any food. This seems to be one of those things people do all the time. They just plant lots of food at the start, like all this farmland. Now, you can survive on animals so long as you're on a temperate tile or a forest tile. Or m most of the tiles that actually have animals on them. If you zoom out here, you can see there's like, there is like breakfast for days over there. Uh, there's some brunch, uh, main course. There's just lots of them. I think there's a rhino around here somewhere as well, if you're willing to uh, take a few risks. With all of that production, we're up to about 17 meals. That should keep us going for a while to come. Then we can concentrate on research, getting ourselves some bed rolls and... Trade, actually, yeah, we do want to get our trade on. I would like to pick up some machine guns if at all possible. Well, with the kitchen up and running and enough meals to last us for at least a couple of days, yeah, they won't spoil for 3.9, time to start planting some crops. This is going to be potatoes, because always potatoes, just always and forever. Uh, over here, we're going to throw down some heel root, and over here, we're going to pull down some psychoid, which reminds me, we are going to need to immediately, actually, we've already got psychoid brewing. Never mind, can we do that in here? I believe it's under the cook section, add bill. Yeah, we can make psychoid tea in here. Which is good, because Damon at some point is going to start getting annoyed by us not giving them their tea. Uh, complex furniture? Complete. Okay then. That was nice and quick. I'm thinking probably smithing. Yeah, we don't really need it that much, but we're going to need it for machinery eventually, so electricity and machinery are going to be up next. 
Uh, then we're probably going to want to get ourselves on some flak armor, gunsmithing, uh, solar panels, batteries, like all of the basics for actually making a, just a, a regular colony. So smithing, we've got to kind of knock that out now. Complex furniture, I think we can hold out on for a bit. I have to come back for beer brewing. No, there's no rush on the beer brewing front. See, the first thing you want to get your hands on though, but one of the early priorities is solar panels and batteries. Where are batteries? Yeah, here we go. Solar panels and batteries. Once you knock out those two, you can survive um, toxic fallouts and cold snaps and all sorts of things because you can grow your crops indoors. They are absolutely essential. And you want those in before your first year if you're going to be staying put. If we were playing uh, as a motion, a tribe in motion, as in not stopping and nomadically, we could definitely, you know, ignore the research for a bit longer. But if we're going to be staying here, which is the plan, we're going to need all of that stuff. After a hard day's work, everyone's got a real bed now. Well, two bedrolls and three poor wooden beds. I mean, Lunk is doing their best, but they're a slow learner. I mean, construction five, not much they're going to be doing. Plant-wise, they have really come up trumps. They've planted all of these leaves. In fact, we are going to expand this out as well. I mean, why not? We might as well expand out our, our crop area here and get ourselves in a little bit more. We can throw together some pemmican with it. Uh, we don't have access... Actually, we do have access to fine meals as well for a little bit of mood boost if we really need it. But I think for now, the plan is research like crazy, uh, create the anima tree, get a whole bunch of animals, chop them up, turn, uh, and we're going to sell off the meat and hides to buy ourselves some machine guns. But I usually like to wait till after day three. Day three is when the first threat arrives and it's usually just one person who we can beat the snot out of. Oh, I forgot some cargo pods landed and we have ourselves a bunch of steel. So 210 steel to add to the pile, which is nice. In fact, I may just cancel all of this mining for now. We don't really need it and it's just a waste of time. Let them research instead of mining. End of day two, uh, or is it? Day three, I don't even know at this point. I'm losing track of time already. Uh, we've got enough meals to keep us going. I'll probably have to go hunt some animals tomorrow. But by and large, we're just plowing through the research as quick as we can. And we've got ourselves down most of our farm section just for a bit of psychoid, a bit of heel root, and a bit of veggies. The only annoying thing so far is Chewbacca's family line. They come with the sleepy trait. This means the rest fall is 40% faster. Meaning this bar goes up, or this bar goes down, 40% faster than other pawns, meaning they spend more time in bed. I've switched everyone over to a biphasic sleeping pattern just to sort something out and... Ooh, you know what, I might just use a caravan trick here, otherwise it's going to be half a day with people bringing this all back. While I was busy doing the caravan trick, it seems Randy was busy doing the manhunter trick. So we have... Two foxes here? Yeah, two arctic foxes. It's just the two, is it? It's weird, I'm going to have to go and install the map because otherwise I'm going to be looking around like crazy going... Where are the rest of the enemies? Uh, and I need to see where everyone is. Everyone else is asleep in bed. That is good. Hey, Chewie, go grab as much steel as you can and bring that home. Actually, you can cancel forming that caravan and prioritize holding that steel back. Once you're home, we'll actually rely everyone up at this door and we can just use two melee blockers to block the door and then everyone else behind with range weaponry shooting the foxes. Should be pretty handy. Okay, everyone should be able to line up here. Oh, nope, not there. Damn it. Why are you... Go oh, there. Excellent. So we have Lunk here, Chewbacca here, our two animal chump blockers in the middle, and then Smokey, Damon, and Stalker at the rear. Boxes should try and come in the front door. Our archers should get off a few shots before they even get in close. And then let's hope they don't target our people. Oh, you went straight for Chewbacca. Uh, I think I'm going to pull Chewbacca back. They're a slow healer. I don't want them getting any more damaged. Okay, is that it? I think we're done. Oh, they took a hell of a bite. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason we didn't want you back at getting injured is they're our only good cook. So maybe I shouldn't be using them as a frontline chump blocker? Ugh. Well, I didn't want to take any risks for this first one. Okay, let's get them some medical tent. Damon is our best medic. They come in at a medical of seven, but they do have a burning passion for it. And they're a fast learner. So I have high hopes that they'll get good real quick. Now, at the same time, you... Damn it. Can you clean this room? No, nope. like there's there's blood right there. Can you can you not see the blood? Anyone? Anyone to clean that room? Never mind then. Just just leave the filth all over the place while we're doing medical tending. There we go. A little bit of cleaning so that we're not operating in a completely rancid environment. Tending quality of 70%. That is excellent. Now the reason that is so useful is because Chewbacca also has another downside. Um yeah, they have slow wound healing, so they heal injuries 50% slower. This means it's going to take them much, much longer to get back on their feet. However, huh. pain, little consciousness grad. Actually, did they have reduced pain or something? Oh. 
Okay. So I think Chewbacca can get straight back to work. We don't... Yeah, we'll get you back to work in a minute. We're going to get everyone else to go off and uh, hunt some uh, animals for our fridge, but I think you can get straight back to cooking when they return. Hey, how are those things still alive? Hunt and hunt. Oh, well, the two of them are downed, but not dead. Uh, we'll take care of that problem. Oh, and we should probably tend to that Arctic fox. Uh, doctor care, but no medicine, if you wouldn't mind. One thing we have to look out for here is rot stink. These animals ha were, they basically went straight to rotten because they had scaria. Uh, this is causing a problem because if you hover over them, we can see they've got rot stink of 4%. Uh, rot stink of 7 over here. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get those over there and we're going to dump them in this corner. We can't really bury them for now, but if we leave them there, they will degrade much faster. And you can see that stink spreading out around them. Uh, we should, we should stay away from there. How are you looking on the health wise? Yeah, I think that, like, if you're exposed for it to too long, it can cause problems, so we need to avoid that, and it's going to get worse and worse as corpse paws become larger. Well, it's time for our next event on day three. We're raid from the night vampires. They are attacking immediately. Uh, we have Kate, Hammer, and Kenna. Right. Uh, you have good shooting, you have good melee, and you have, oh my god, a 16 in melee? Yeah, I think we're going to shoot you a bunch. Right. Fact. Oh my god, is that guy a brawler? Right, so you're a brawler and you've got... Ooh, you're a careful shooter. So we need to kill two of them. I'm saying we go out in the field and meet them with our three ranged people. Uh, Chewbacca's bringing back a fresh carcass. Yeah, I say we get everyone out front. And we line up here. Yeah, actually we line up right here. Uh, damn it, guys. Just, just, can't you just line up? Yeah, there you go. Then we get our uh, Lunk and Chewbacca behind them. Uh, we're going to get in our animals as well, so we can do a little bit of chump blocking at the door. We're going to stay outside, shoot at them, and then run back inside when they get too close. And then we're going to basically kill them there. Oh, that reminds me. I should I should probably close these doors down here. Yeah, we don't want them uh, causing us any problems. And by that I mean they'll obviously come in and start beating stuff up and setting fires if we're not careful. Everyone's just getting into position, but I've decided I'm going to move Damon out ahead of everyone. Namely because they've got the fast walker trait, or the jogging trait. This means we should be able to get out there, do some damage, and then pull back. Eh, we're not going to do much though. Our shooting skill is one. However, they are a fast learner. I mean, maybe they can get off a hit or two in the dark at night. Well, yeah, awkward. Wow, that was terrible shooting. Joker. Oh, get back here. Ooh, that was good. Okay, so you, are you worth killing? Not really. You are a careful shooter, so, I mean, I kind of do want to kill you anyway. Uh, your movement speed, is there anything affecting it? Damn, I'm going to have to install the rim HUD so I can see their movement speed without having to go in here. 4.6, yeah, I don't think anyone can catch you except for... Uh, Damon. We want to me melee attack them? Ooh, might be worth it. Our animals are not actually trained up yet for attack. Um, you know what? I was actually only training up in one specific thing, but maybe we can train them up in attack. I'll see if Damon can't run those down, and I will send... Actually, we're going to send the whole team. We will draft up the whole team, and we are going to go, hey, why don't you melee them down? Never mind, they're going to get away, namely because I think we can capture this guy, Hammer, here. And uh, they've got... They're going to bleed out in five hours, but we might be able to keep them alive just a little bit longer. And if we can keep them alive, that's someone we can, you know, sell for money. I think we're okay with slavery, or selling people into it, so... Money is good, that'll get us guns, and guns will make the next raid less of a problem. After a very productive hunting session, we now have plenty of tradable materials. All we need now is for Chewbacca to successfully tame one of these alpacas for us. Uh, if they could do that, that would be great. We harvested a bunch of random berries from around the place so they could have something to tame alpacas with. Come on, give us an alpaca. You got this. You're like, your skills are like level 10 or 11. You're, you're okay, you failed. That's, um, mildly frustrating. You know what? Let, let's. There's more. There's there's more over here. You can you can tame that alpaca. Go for it. That is three failed attempts at 56% in a row. That that's pretty good. Oh, uh, what are we gonna call this place? Chewbacca thinks you should give your faction a name. What should it be called? Hmm. Our faction shall be called Experiments with Darwin, and our colony will shall be called Forced Evolution. And you, 
This is your fourth attempt at 56% chances. 60% chance failed. That is... Fine. Do you, do you have any... Oh my god, you ran out of berries. Mm. You know what? Go back and have a nap. Because you need to have a nap because you keep getting tired all the time. Okay, we'll, we'll get we'll we'll get an alpaca tomorrow. We might need to build a fence for them though. Actually, maybe a fence would be a good idea now. We have finally got ourselves an alpaca. Excellent. Now we can caravan properly with an animal. God, it's been so long since I got to caravan. This is going to be good. Uh, then we need to chop up a bunch of these. We are going to go buy ourselves some guns. Time to butcher up that bank. And then we can turn some of them to meals. The rest we're going to load up onto that alpaca and take out of here. Ooh, smithing research is finished. Yeah, I do like to make ourselves a little bit of bonus to the researching. Otherwise, this tribal start is really, really slow. Now let me think. I think... Hmm, electricity might be nice. We're also going to need refrigeration at some point as well. That would also be pretty tasty. Oh, but there's so many things I want to get. But... No, electricity. It's got to be electricity. Everything else down here can wait. At the end of night five, we have a lot of meat ready to go. We're just waiting for Hammer to wake up. We should be able to enslave them. Smokey, how you doing on sleep? Yeah, I think first thing in the morning, you're going to go enslave Hammer. If we can sell Hammer at the same time, hopefully we can get our hands on a couple of guns. Uh, come on, you totally want to be our slave. Excellent. Now, Damon here is our fastest pawn. Uh, so I say we grab them and we go on a little jaunt. We are going to want to pop out onto the world map. Uh, yep, and this is the l closest place we can go to. We're going to form a caravan. We're heading over there. We're going to grab Damon. We're going to grab uh, slave, my slave Pants. And we're going to grab an alpaca to give ourselves more space. Uh, get rid of all the supply stuff. Now, we're going to take all the venison. We're going to take all the alpaca meat. Uh, take a couple of pieces of herbal medicine just in case we need it. Then we're going to grab... Oof, it was two simple meals. Probably won't need them. And for item-wise, take you, take you. And, ooh, camel hide? Yeah, we'll take the lot. Wow, how have we not gone over capacity yet? I have no idea. There we go. Everything. We're literally taking just the lot. Everything we can possibly carry that we can potentially sell for money and a couple of pieces of medicine to take with us. And done. Okay, a large part of the caravan's food will still rot. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Now, this should be pretty quick, hopefully. Uh, yeah, grab them. In fact, let's get everyone into hauling. A whole lot of you. Uh, you're all up to level one hauling. We want this caravan loaded as soon as possible. Eh, off you go. Get off the tile. Oh, God. What are you doing? Seriously? The absolute furthest away direction. Mm. Remind me never to send them that direction again. I'll probably send them down here or something just to get off the tile, just to make it faster. All right, they're on their way. Hopefully they shouldn't be more than about half a day. All right, caravan has hit the road. It's going to take 0 0.1 days to get there because we are on a road. 0 0.5 movement difficulty and we're doing it during the daylight hours. In fact, I'm curious, what's it to over there? 0 0.8 of a day to there. 0 0.3 of a day to there. So 0 0.3 of a day to another trading partner. That is... Oh, hell yes. What? No, no. Okay, that that was my mistake. <laughs> There's something to do with the tiles and the no, directions have to go. Never mind. All right, everybody. Here we go. Please be lucky. Please be lucky. Just give us some, you know, heavy SMG would be wonderful. But, you know, if you don't get... Ooh, gene packs. You can buy gene packs here now, which is really awesome. Uh, so I should have come on, come on. Give me guns. Give me guns. You got heavy SMG. Oh, yeah. EMP launcher. I prefer a smoke launcher, but an EMP might work. Tox bomb launcher. A self-loading low-pressure pressure canister launcher loaded with tox bombs. What impact? They will stick to the ground, releasing toxic gas for several seconds. Okay, burns the lungs and eyes, causes temporary shortness of breath and reduction in sight. Okay, so basically you hit them with this, it makes it really hard for them to do anything, and they're probably going to feel it for a while afterwards. Like stinging eyes, kind of like a uh, pepper spray. Uh, we might grab a few things here. Let me let me have a quick gander. Wait. Wait. I remember. Cancel this for a second. Pause it. Go back out here. Uh, the trick is you want to strip the prisoners before you sell them. The same amount of money for them, but if you strip them first, you get to sell their clothes as well. See, still worth 49. Yeah, yeah, trying to, trying to fool me. Oh my god, the alpaca's worth more than you. All right, we were able to afford one heavy SMG, which we will purchase. Thank you very much. And uh, then we will immediately equip that SMG on Damon there. And then we will bring them home. 
So I would consider that a successful first trade. Now this is one of the reasons we picked right here. We have multiple trade partners and we can buy guns. It's going to be an eternity before we get to actually the point where we could make guns. Never mind making half decent ones. So settling near a tile to trade with, just so powerful. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here for the day. Uh, next up is going to be, well, I might make longer episodes after this because I kind of want to burn an awful lot of time on RimWorld right now. I don't know why. It's probably all of these uh, nice little genes they've got going on. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.